Hi, in this video, we'll be going over a checklist of things to check before you launch your WordPress website. So if this is something you'd like to learn how to do, then watch this video. Okay, so we'll be working on this website project for a directory that we worked on in a previous video. So we'll just go over what I'd look out for before launching this live. So first, let's just start with the basics. So just here in settings, you want to go to general. And then you want to make sure that the URL is correct here and you have the title and the tagline filled out correctly. So just making sure that this is descriptive of, of, of your business is important for SEO. And next, regarding users, we wanna check users here and just make sure that the users here are, are authorized by you just in case. And of course, making sure that you monitor this for any malicious activities. Okay, so next we can look at plugins. So again, this is an ongoing process of keeping your plugins updated. So just what you want to do is just click on the plugins that need to be updated and just click update now. And this one is inactive. So any plugins as well that you're not being used after development, then you can just delete it. Okay, so we'll just update the other ones after. So again, you can update themes as well. So just making sure that your theme is up to date and always just double check that your website is still functioning after each update cycle okay so next what you want to be checking is forms as well so any forms on the website is essential to check so we're gonna go and log out and just go back to the main website yep so let's just do this form example here and let's just switch it back to english okay so just a comment great so the functionality is working here as well so just make sure to just check all your forms because that's pretty important especially if you're um, a services business that re rely on new clients reaching out to you for your website as that's the main point of a website for a business is to generate more revenue so ensuring that if the client wants to reach out to your business that there isn't any barriers Okay, so next we want to check the responsiveness. So this is all about looking at the website in different views. So right now we're viewing it in the desktop view. As you can see, all the elements are viewable. What you can do in Google Chrome is just go to inspect. And then here in dimensions, you're able to test different devices. So this is how it would look like on an iPhone. And then this is how it would look like on a Samsung phone. So yeah, all the elements are responsive. So everything is readable to the, to the user and it's a good user experience. So you can just check multiple pages just to ensure this is looking as you expect. And you want, and just also try on different browsers. So not just on Google Chrome, check out Firefox, and Microsoft Edge and Safari as well, as those might have different layouts depending on the complexity of your layouts. Okay, so next what we wanna check is links. So you wanna make sure that any links that you have on your website are working, like buttons, especially uh, buttons in the main menu. So here in the footer, any contact, information so like phone numbers addresses if they're linked they should be clickable and direct to the proper destination as well as any social media links that you have added to the website make sure that those are correct as well as that will lower conversions if you're sending users to a page which you did not intend to send them. So next, what you want to check is the checkout process. If you're an e-commerce website, making sure that the checkout process is correct is a is essential as that's how you generate revenue. So test it on different payment methods such as Stripe and PayPal, all the methods you have enabled, as well as shipping as well, and email confirmations for orders, as well as user user accounts. So customer accounts, making sure those are working as expected. Okay, so back on the WordPress website, another important thing to check is 
making sure that the search and visibility is correct. So when your website is live, you want it to be searched by Google. So just make sure that this is not checked as if you have this enabled, then it will prevent Google from indexing your site, which would reduce the amount of SEO traffic. Okay, so next, what you want to do is just install a Google Analytics plugin. So we have that here with SiteKit. So this is just connecting Google Analytics. So you're able to keep track of traffic as well as your search engine positions with Google Search Console. So I did another video on this on how to set this up. So you can check my channel about that if you want a more in-depth tutorial on Google Analytics and Search Engine Console. Okay, so next what we want to do is check the favicon. That's the little icon on the top left corner of your browser. So to add a favicon, we can just install a plugin, just go to add new, and then search favicon. Yeah, so this one over here, just favicon by Real Favicon Generator. You can just click activate and settings, just go to favicon, and then it says go to appearance, appearances and favicon. Okay, and then we're just going to pick an image, see what we have here. Okay, so I just select an image, so just my logo, and then generate favicon. Here at the bottom, we're just gonna click generate your favicon in HTML code. Okay, great, so the favicon has now been installed. So if we check the website, you see here in the top left corner, that's the favicon. So that's also important that it's something that you usually forget in the design process. So just double check that. And then next, again, if you're a business website, just double check all the content that you added. Of course, having grammar errors or misspellings on the website can deter a potential customer from reaching out to you if they see that you're not really detail oriented with your content. So again, that could lower your conversions if the grammar or the content is incorrect on your website. So again, that's another major factor to check apart from the contact forms is ensuring that the content is accurate and readable by the visitor. Okay, next we're going to look at a 404 page. So essentially, when someone visits your website and they put something, they visit a page that's not available, say like random. So you see here it goes to random, but it still redirects the home page. So that's something you want to ensure you have set up either a redirect to the home page or a separate page so that it doesn't just redirect them into oblivion as if they see that a page is not available on your website but they still have access to the main menu that can encourage them to keep searching compared to if you show them the default page which is just a white blank page that could scare them and you will lose that potential customer or lead so again ensuring that if you do change content on your website, say before I had a page called slash random, but now I changed it to random changes. Just making sure that you set up a redirect from slash random to slash random changes. So any links in the, any links available on the web of slash random is redirected to slash random changes. So to do that, what we can do is just go and install a redirect plugin. So go to add new, and we're going to download the redirection plugin. This one right here, it's very popular. I click install now. Okay, and then we just go over here into settings. Okay, and then it's just going to ask for some setup. So we'll just go through their setup. I've just enabled all these and then it's just going to test the API and finish the setup. Okay, great. So yeah, to set up a redirect, you would just go over here to redirect and then we're going to click add new up here. So we take our URL dash random and then we're going to target it to dash random things and then redirect. So here it is, and we can check the redirect, and then it's working. So this is also important for SEO, as if any pages, any links were changed, then you want to make sure that any backlinks that you have on other websites are redirecting to the correct pages with the correct content. So next, another thing you want to make sure you have is the security plugin, as your website is now live. So making sure that your website 
has a firewall and that that you're able to prevent malware so i would recommend wordfence security as your security plugin because it's free so you can start with the free version and then you can upgrade to a paid version if you need more features so it comes with firewall and a malware scanner and another thing you can do to secure a website further is change the default admin panel to from WP admin, which is the default and change it to something else like backend or management, something where it's not easy to guess as there's a lot of bots that just brute force WordPress admins. So that's another way to improve your security is just by changing the default parameters of WordPress. And again, it, with the users as well, it's just not using a user called admin because that's the default as well and most popular. And again, with security, just changing your password every few months and enabling two-factor authentication if possible, if you really need to protect the information on your website. And also keeping backups of your websites. Usually your hosting would provide free backups on your website, but if not, then you can install this plugin here. So go to plugins and then add new and just search for backup. Yep, and this one just right here, updraft. You can just install this plugin and this will provide you with on server backups, but just make sure you down, download them also. So they're offsite, just in case your server is compromised, you're still able to access your backups on a different server. Okay. So lastly, what you want to also install is a plugin for SEO. So I would recommend Yoast SEO. So I have another video on my channel going over Yoast SEO. If you'd like to learn more about SEO. So just this plugin here, just install and activate. Okay, so you'll just need to go through the setup, but I did it already in another video. So you can watch my video on Yoast SEO. So in terms of SEO, just making sure that your pages are labeled correctly. So over here, say on the business directory, just making sure that the, the title is correct. And when you have Yoast SEO enabled here, it comes with this widget, which you're able to edit the meta description as well. So making sure that the title is correct, the URL is here, which they labeled as the slug and then the meta description. So just a description will help with SEO. It's this snippet here. When you search for your website in Google, this is how it will look like. So if you're able to complete these optimizations mentioned here by Yoast SEO, then that will help you rank better on Google. So this concludes the end of the video. I hope you're able to know what you should look out for before you launch your WordPress website.